Good afternoon. I'm Daniel Rigamonte. I'm the Salisbury Family Professor of Neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins. Today I would like to talk about hydrocephalus, adult hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a condition characterized by the accumulation of cerebral spinal fluid inside any on the surface of the brain and of the spinal cord. Common causes of hydrocephalus include congenital anomalies, trauma, tumors, hemorrhage, and infection. There is, however, a type of adult hydrocephalus that occurs without an apparent cause with a very slow and insidious progression. It eventually manifests itself with difficulty walking, difficulty remembering, and difficulty controlling urination. Every neurosurgery resident learns early on in the training how to perform a shunt in patients with hydrocephalus. I did too. Furthermore, being in charge of vascular neurosurgery for the first 15 years of my professional career, I had the opportunity to see a lot of adult patients with hydrocephalus develop after a subarachnoid hemorrhage. I can remember a couple of critical experiences in my developing a special interest in this condition. The first occurred to me when I was covering for my pediatric neurosurgery partner at University of Maryland. One day a young girl came into the hospital with an acute shunt malfunction. She had already had a dozen shunt revisions and when I saw the images and I realized that she had an obstructive hydrocephalus, I offered to her parents to perform a new type of surgery at the time called an endoscopic third ventriculostomy, ETV. That instead of the usual shunt revision. I was successful that day and I quickly forgot about it. However, a few years later I received a letter from the girl, now in college, thanking me for having removed from her the fear of another emergency shunt malfunction. It was then that I fully understood the importance of this procedure and it is indication. The next defining moment in this area occurred in 1997 when I received a phone call requesting to evaluate a case of congenital hydrocephalus and shunt malfunction in a young adult. The young man had a history of multiple shunt malfunction and revision until a final catastrophic shunt failure due to infection that left him blind and almost dead. I accepted the patient for transfer and he arrived by air ambulance to Hopkins and it took many surgery to eradicate the infection, to remove all the old hardware and insert a new system. Eventually he was able to go back home and although he had suffered major deficit, he was able to communicate to his family and join in the life with his loved ones. Fifteen years later, he is still enjoying good health. This case was an eye-opener for me. It demonstrated how a disease that the resident considers simple and a surgical procedure they consider easy, quote-unquote, could become a titanic challenge. It was because of this experience that shortly thereafter I decided to collaborate with a colleague in neurology to provide a more comprehensive care in adults with hydrocephalus. Since then, I led several important research projects and I continue to advance the care of my patients.